This week on VIP Access, I'm right here in Lagos, Nigeria, at the home of Efezi Music Group. This is a record label and management company for various artists. And today, I'll be talking to the flag bearer, none other than the global superstar, Mama Africa. You know who I'm talking about. It is Yemi Alade. Hi, Yemi. Hey, what's up, babe? How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me here. Yemi Alade is actually here rehearsing for her upcoming music video. There's so many videos lined up. We're even losing count. <laughs> I know, right? It's my work. But what else would I do if I'm not, you know, shooting videos and releasing? I love it. So today you're planning to learn the new dance moves for the music video or have you already learned the steps? I've previously been coached. Um, so I'm just here to kind of like perfect it um, and to dance with them for the first time. I haven't danced with them as a group. So let's see how that goes. And the song is unreleased, you know, so yeah, all of that. I'm gonna get straight into your albums. It's the Woman of Steel season. And when I look back at all the other albums, they've all done so well globally. Um, speaking from King of Queens, Mama Africa, Mama Afrique, Black Magic, and now uh, Woman of Steel. How would you say that your sound has um, revolution? Because I saw an interview you were doing, I think, in America, and somebody asked you about your genre, and you're like, I'm a genre myself. <laughs> Yes, that's true. I've come to realize that that's it. Because, like, you, you hear a Yemi Alade track and you know it's Yemi Alade. And if you hear someone singing something similar to it, you say, oh, you sound like Yemi Alade. It's unique, you know, and then I, I can't be sleeping on myself. It's act, I'm, Yemi Alade is actually a genre. Yes. Building a strong brand across Africa and also globally, and a brand that also represents Africa. So, in a nutshell, how have you been able to do that? But you're one artist who's managed to be massive in every region, especially mine in East Africa. And that's a real achievement. You don't know I was born in East Africa. <laughs> well, I think, to be sincere, I, I wish, right? But um, the thing, I think it's, it's a series of um, being consistent. Over the years, I've consistently put out work and um, I'm grateful that the audience has been ever acceptive of it. I think also because we've taken the risk many times, there are many trips we've taken that weren't about putting money in our pocket. There are many trips we took that were about taking money from our pocket to, you know, create value that isn't necessarily about just making money. I think the many times we did that has also come to have, has also, you know, created the, the the brand that you see today. That's pretty much it. Okay. How many languages do you speak or sing in? Well, obviously, I speak English. I did try. I speak Pidgin English, if you're going to say that, if you're going to, you know, um, recognize that. Um, I also speak Igbo. I understand some Yoruba. Swahili, I'm learning a bit, you know, uh, French, of course. Um, way past the 50% mark for French. And then, but in terms of, like, songs I've sang in, in other languages other than Nigerian or English, Swahili, of course, Portuguese, and French. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Wow, quite impressive. Who else can speak all these languages? So I wanted to ask you about your music videos and um, your YouTube. You're also one of the most followed African celebrities on social media and YouTube in particular. Um, and uh, your music videos are now hitting a million views in, um, I don't know, less than a week. How do you achieve that? I mean, it must be quite hectic to um, keep up with your own audience and also be producing world-class music videos like you do, but you make it look so effortless. In the year 2019, when my album Man of Steel was released, even before we released it, we had an understanding within the record label and myself that um, we would shoot videos for almost every song. And so we we have we had already been on that journey before we even released the album. Um, so seeing that the albums have spread through 2019 into 2020, it's such a blessing, especially now that it's what we were left with, whether, you know, R&B slow love songs, which we put out in January, which is good time for Valentine, you know? Um, and just to, you know, mellow the speed of my sound for a bit. But let's not get it twisted, because 2020 is about to be a problem. I'm going back to my high tempo, you know, dance dance music, especially um, on this track called Chekere featuring Angeli Kijo, which I'm super excited for, and um, the new track that I'm shooting a video for right now. And I can't wait to make you guys dance. Yes. 
what is the story with Angelique Kijo? I mean, everybody is, um, of course, been looking up to her because she's a legendary African doing massive things across the globe. And um, you actually did a remix of her song, which she granted you the permission, which is in your album, Shekere. Tell us about the coming together of two women of steel. I don't think it's possible to study African music and mention Fela and not mention Angelique Kijo, you would be doing yourself a disservice. I grew up loving her music and eventually along the road I got to meet her and she actually was the one who requested that I remake her song. She literally gave me the rest. She just gave me responsibility and walked away. You know, like, and it took almost two, two, three years to put the song together, to get the idea across. Because Wombolombo is such a mega track. It makes no sense to, you know, dilute or water it down to a point that makes no sense. And we, we we tried our best, and we revamped it with Kublon and Clem. And I love the I love what we have right now. Um, she's like a big mommy to me, a music mommy, my musical mom. I look up to her in so many ways. Uh, congrats on her fourth Grammy um, award win. It's, it's it warms my heart to see a woman who has put in so many of her years, so much of her energy to still be recognized and still be going at it the way she does. She's nothing less of an icon. So most of the women who are um, on the level that you are across, um, I will say Africa and also the whole world are being managed by massive record labels. But I would say that um, you are actually being managed by record labels that is not that massive, but you guys are doing massive stuff. What would you say um, um, keeps you where you are? Because I personally know that, for instance, the Emi Alede brand is, is, a, is not the brand that flaunts um, the riches that come with being um, a successful brand. But when you look beyond the surface, you realize that there is so much that has been amassed over time. Um, my numbers don't lie. And therefore, that puts me in the category of, like they say, A-list or what have you. Other than that, a Fizzy Music Group also has that kind of thing going, where it's very easy to um, put a Fizzy in the not in 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 a um, in a category that seems like okay, it's it's a small record label. A Fizzy Music Group has distribution all around the world. We are established in different countries in the world, and that is why they are able to birth an artist like me. You know, so um, also I'm also signed to Universal Music France for licensing on a licensing deal, but I'm still 100% a Fizzy Music Group. Um, brand so pretty much um, what I'm just trying to say I'm trying to say a label that doesn't make noise but it's as big as as they get name a country that we don't have links in name one I'm waiting <laughs> have you found Johnny that's the question people are waiting and ask wait let me find it. <laughs> nope I don't see him anywhere okay this song is super successful and it's a gift that keeps giving and even when you go to YouTube they've, the hundreds and millions of views will not stop rolling did you ever expect it? Jenny wasn't a song that got an official release Jenny was a song that was leaked it was leaked from the studio where we recorded it we, I'm not sure we probably would have even released that song because it was very different from everything I was doing you know um, all the songs I'd released prior to this I'd released about 10 records before I released Jenny and none of them were in any way similar to this track. So I didn't see it coming. Um, the fact that it has over 100 million um, views on YouTube uh, along so many other things. I'm just really grateful and thankful to be associated with such a track. Because not so many artists are blessed in their lifetime to have you know, such a mega disturbance. Fans from East Africa and Kenya who are watching keep saying that you need to get a house in um, Kenya and East Africa. So what do you want to tell your people? They, they really want you. <laughs> See, Ainko, you need to talk to your president. Where's my passport? Work on this thing. It's very simple. <laughs> I speak Swahili. I'm there all the time. I need a passport. I'm your African sister. Same blood, same skin. Aiko, isn't that we eat in the it's same true. place? It's uh -uh. true. It's true. Leave all these things. We're sisters. By the way, we want a music video of Swahili poverty, Swahili version. I'm working on it, and I, I, I saw I saw the treatment, and it's amazing. I can't wait to share with you guys to finally shoot the video. It's beautiful. It's so funny. 
movie. You know this. Always. Thank you so much, Yemi Alade. You guys, I have to let her go back to her rehearsals and her super busy schedule. I really am thankful for this opportunity. Yemi Alade, um, Ogati, Onazi, Gideon, everybody at Efizi Music Group. Thank you so much for having me. VAP Access is capping off this week and every week on YouTube. I'll be back with another celebrity. Bye-bye.